I want to say thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk to you today about the area of application resource management or ARM. You see, there's this growing pressure point for application performance. And application starvation occurs when the infrastructure, and it doesn't matter whether you're on premises or in the cloud, can't service the demands of the application or applications to its end users. And IBM has been looking into this space intensively in the past couple of years. And what we found is that infrastructure resource starvation is one of the most frequent causes of application performance degradation. Now think about this for a moment. This is a bit of a surprise because most people think it's the code. But if you look at the focus on development lately, shipping quality, leveraging enhanced processes for better quality like continuous integration, continuous delivery, CIDC, QA, pre-prod, staging, code quality impacting performance is actually less and less of a concern. It's about less than 10% of the concern. So we need to look at effective infrastructure resource sharing that can continuously respond so dynamically to the environment. And in an on-premise data center, for example, applications starve when the demand for shared infrastructure resources remains non-prioritized. And given this limitation, application workloads are typically over-provisioned and placed without sufficient understanding and the context for the available resources. This is the whole reason for the cloud. You would over-provision on-premise resources and that was inefficient, and so folks went to the cloud. But guess what's happening? Most clients on AWS or Azure are actually over-allocating their resources to avoid the performance issues. In other words, their culture and their mode of operations are the same as if it were on-premise. And this is one of the reasons why many clients aren't actually realizing the full value of the hybrid cloud. And at IBM, we believe that clients can leverage and see or experience two and a half times more value in their movement to a hybrid cloud environment than they're experiencing right now. A, we look at our approach to applications and building them. And in terms of the performance and maintaining the robustness, things like Instana and looking at kind of re-architected microservices apps. So many clients are just moving the same app they had in a monolithic form, moving it to the cloud and expecting great savings. And number two, is they're over-provisioning it, as I mentioned earlier. So there's a lot of cost savings opportunities here, as opposed to just meeting the SLO or SLA, service level objective, service level agreement demands. And as I mentioned earlier, most clients on AWS, they over-allocate resources to avoid performance issues, which means wasted dollars. So a really rich AI ops strategy that is steeped in application resource management Turbonomics, I'm going to show you that in a moment. Application performance management, APM, so things like Instana, and chat-like resolution services for troubleshooting. Not only helps your business meet their service level agreements and keeps clients happy, but it will contain skyrocketing cloud costs from over-provisioning. In fact, the low-hanging fruit is to capture cloud costs with Turbonomics that are needlessly wasted. And I would like to take about two or three minutes and to go show you the tool itself and demo it. So I'm in the Turbonomic tool here. Turbonomic is really about three things. Assuring the performance of the apps by making sure they get the right resources when they need them, as I mentioned earlier. Looking at our on-premises and cloud resources and using them as efficiently as possible and adhering to any service level objectives and business policies in our work. And there's really three main stakeholders that take a peek at this. SRE, Site Reliability Engineers, uh, the management team, SRE managers, SREs, and the infrastructure managers. I don't have enough time to go through all of this. I'd like to set up that time, but I kind of want to show you some key things. Here is what we call a supply chain. These are all the apps that Turbonomic is recognizing in your business. Now, this is an agentless infrastructure. And what that means is you don't go and install clients on every single bit. That would be really tremendous uh, overhead costs. So you can see we have a number of business applications. We have found transactions. I can see different types of uh, containers and virtual machines that are running and so on and so forth. And there's the dashboards here. So I can customize these by the way, but for me, I can go look at the top business applications uh, by transaction, by business. So if I kind of go and show them all here, here's a mobile banking transfer app. You can see that response time is starting to uh, go down, which is a nice thing in this particular case. Other apps, we're having some issues here, but I'm going to go into the mobile app here. And now I've drilled into that and you can see within this app, there's 11 services 
and we run across four virtual machines. When you see virtual machine here, that could be a container. In fact, that gives us that kind of refactored cloud native form of scaling where I put different functions of this application into different containers. So I'll spin up the container that maybe does the transfer and I don't have to spin up the front end that shows the GUI of all that kind of stuff. So you can see what the average response times. There's actually a recommendation here of 29 delete actions. I'd like to go and see what Turbonox is suggesting. Here, these are all in the categories of how to make us more efficient. So that's really interesting. So I'm gonna come back to my main window here. And you notice we do have different flavors or slices. These are our on-premise applications. These are the cloud applications. Once again, I can go and see there's a bunch of pending actions. There's some stop actions. Maybe there's some provisioned virtual machines that are being charged money that aren't being used. I have seen many clients talk to me about how some developer left a service running on the cloud and it cost them thousands of dollars. Here are the potential savings, I think, in this inflationary world. Technology is deflationary. So let's go take a peek at what we have here. I'm going to actually filter in here. I'd like to filter by action category. Um, we'll just look at things that do performance, right? We could look at savings. We could look at those types of things, but I'll apply there and maybe I'll add non-disruptive. In other words, I want to see what are non-disruptive performance changes uh, that we can do. So you see, I have an opportunity to save $164 a month by doing this. Who wouldn't do that? I can increase performance and actually save money. Maybe I'll drill into one of these right here. And now I get the details into this virtual machine on this particular uh, suggested change. Now, I want you to think of this as the way you drive modern sports cars today. Not too many people drive or buy a non-automatic car like a standard manual gear shift. Today, most transmissions are like Tiptronic transmission, where I could drive in an automatic, but then I can use the paddle shifters and drive it as if it was a standard car. Standard car transmissions have advantages over automatic transmissions. For example, you can, I'm from Canada, so you can brake on ice by gearing down without touching the brake, but they're better on gas, they're cheaper to fix, they accelerate quicker. So how do you want to drive your business? Maybe you need to trust in the automatic mode, the turbonomic engine. Well, what I love is Turbonomic gives you that Tiptronic type transmission. You can drive it fully automated, let Turbonomic take control, semi-automated, automated in some areas, automated in not, and manual in others. And as you build your trusted relationship with the platform, then you might turn over more and more responsibility. And I would do that really by going and creating uh, different plans, how we're going to set policies and what we want to go after. So what are out of bounds and inbounds, and then ultimately coming back and creating policies. And all of these suggestions on these policies that uh, the tool is making, I can actually schedule them and I can turn them into automatic scheduling pieces or whether I want to get notifications. So create a new automation policy here. Maybe I want to create it on the database for GuyDB only. I could select all the databases. I go and now I create a policy, I set it up, and then I'll let Turbonomic go and run it. So that's just a quick view of the product. You've never had this kind of insight, not only into the way your applications are running from a service level objective and service level agreement perspective, but you've never had this kind of insight into your costs. Just buying this product and getting it to run, it's gonna pay for itself, because I can promise you lots and lots of cost overruns are happening across all of your applications. And once again, you want to see them all here and you can see at the top, this is a hybrid cloud environment. We'll start to go filter and maybe just want to look at savings. So whatever the number is, if it's, if it's at least a hundred dollars a month, I'll go look at it. I've had no savings on the AWS cloud, but when I go over to Azure, there's a whole bunch of stuff that adds up, which is $887 a month. You know, sometimes a lot of the little things can save a lot of money. Something to check out. Let me know if you want to talk more.